All right, good afternoon, everybody. So today's hopefully, finally, the day that we will get our split phase inverters taking over one of my breaker panels in my house. Now, that being said, we've got some work to do before we even get to that point. So, let me show you some of the stuff that I got within the past few days, which should hopefully help us complete this task today and supply a significant portion of my house with solar power. All right, so this is the first thing I picked up. Uh, it is a 125 amp 12 space panel. So it will give me double the size of what I currently have with a six space panel. My connectors for my ENT uh, conduit showed up in the mail. So I'm hoping that with the new changes that I'm going to be making, I'll have enough. Guess we'll find out. And last but certainly not least, I picked up an electrical wireway. Uh, four foot long. It's actually meant for uh, outdoor use. I got it on eBay, but I think it's really gonna make it uh, a whole lot easier to be able to run our cables. So with that wireway, I actually kind of lost some sleep last night trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to run this. Because it's four foot long, and obviously from our far box to here is more than four feet. I kind of wish now that I would have got looked for a six footer. That would have been able to go the entire way. Uh, initially I was thinking, well, if I come from this edge of this inverter and go over, you know, I'll, I'll at least be able to get the combination of wires down here taken care of and then be able to adjust which wires go where for what box. But then I realized, well, that works great, but I don't have a whole lot of room to work with with my battery cables. So I would have to shift the wire way over a few inches, which would basically, I'd be wasting a lot of wireway space on the far side of my AC input disconnect. So then I started thinking, well, what if I spaced it away from the wall so that these wires could run behind it? And that's a great idea, except again, I still don't have a whole, I don't have any extra lugs right now for my battery connections. And because of where the, the mounting holes are on the wireway, I couldn't line the box up with the edge of the inverter. It would end up having to be sticking out this way a little bit. So then I'd be wasting some space on this side and still wasting some space on that side. So I then thought, well, what if I use the wireway for the combination of wires from both inverters and had it run as far as I could and then basically have some conduit come out of the end of the wireway to go into the panels. And at least right now, that made the most sense to me. It also would allow me to expand the wireway down the road a whole lot easier than if I started it here and then tried to expand over here. But I still had the problem of these battery connections. They're not long. I don't have any extra lugs right now. And today's gonna be one of the last days for a little while that I'm gonna be able to actually get some projects taken care of. And this still might change as I go through today and, and try to 
mount the wire away, mount the new box. But I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take small sections of conduit and basically run the conduit all the way through the wireway for my battery connections. I will check and see if I can get these ENT connectors right up here at the base of the inverter where the battery connections come into the inverter. I'll have to see if the spacing is large enough for these one inch connectors. If not, then I am just going to trim these down just long enough to be basically a pass through in the wireway for the battery connections so that they can still route exactly where they are right now. The one inch is still bigger than the two aught cable and it's going to be big enough for larger cabling, a 4 aught if I need to ever put a 4 aught on these inverters. But since the manual recommends 2 aught, I should be alright. So the one thing I was concerned about if I did put the conduit as a pass-through would be, am I going to be blocking cables coming from the sides? So here's a side view of the wireway if I ended up running the conduit as a pass through, through the wireway, there's still plenty of space regardless. Even if I put it smack dab in the middle, I can run wire in front of or behind the conduit. So not ideal, but I think it gives me the best use of what I currently have without pulling all the cabling out completely. I will say at some point in time, I'm more than likely going to rip out all of the cabling and try and route everything through the wireway. It just looks a whole lot cleaner. I can have my conduit running out the top going to the inverter. So basically all you would end up seeing is the blue conduit and the wireway, and then everything else would be contained inside the wireway. And I think that's just a very slick, clean look and had I even thought about using the wireway earlier, I would have gone that route hands down. I know I've seen uh, David Paz's channel. He's got a lot of stuff run through his wireway and the conduit. He's using the EMT conduit going up to his inverters and that just looks nice and slick and clean. And I stumbled across another channel last night I, I honestly don't even remember what it was, but the gentleman had four LV6548s hooked up and one long section of wireway running, and he had all of his cabling inside the wireway, all cleaned and buttoned up. It looked beautiful. So knowing my OCD having the wireway right beneath the inverters and still having these wires beneath uh, I know that I'm gonna want to try and fix this and utilize the wireway better. It would not be that hard to be able to put some some of the bus bar connections inside the wireway to just make it look a little cleaner. I mean I've seen some installs and this looks clean compared to some I've seen. And I have to admit, I do enjoy seeing how everything routes. So I don't know. Time will tell how I end up doing it. But as most of you guys know that are in any DIY space, you're never truly going to be satisfied. There's always going to be a next version or the next step. You're, you're going to get it close and you'll complete several steps, but there's always going to be something more that you want to do. Uh, you're never truly complacent with how things are. There's things that you would change if you had to do it all over again. So we'll see how things go. But today, I've already powered off the inverters. I've disconnected the AC loads. So there's no power going to my AC box and that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to dismantle that box, get the new box laid out and prepped, get the wall prepped for 
hanging the new box because it's larger. I know the wireway is going to have a lot of, of metal drilling that I'm going to have to do, and I'm going to have to try and get all my slots and holes marked ahead of time because I'm going to want to drill those out once before I start running anything through the wireway because there's not a whole lot of space to drill from above because of the inverters. And again, hindsight's 2020. Had I known that I was going to use a wireway ahead of time, I would have moved all this down a little bit, which would have allowed me to put the wireway lower, so then I have more room to work. Unfortunately, even if I wanted to right now, as I stated earlier, I don't have any more lugs for my 2 aught cable. I've got more 2 aught cable, just not any lugs right now. And the last time I had to run up to the store and pick up lugs, it was ridiculously expensive. And so you can see this positive line, there's barely any room. Same thing with this positive line. So let's get started. It is just about two o'clock. Hopefully we can get this done before it gets too late. Let's go. I feel like I've been to this place before. Opening everything up, taking it apart, hooking it back up, then taking it apart again. So let's get this all cleaned up real quick and hopefully get started on actually making forward progress instead of backwards. All right, so after looking at how this gland works, it actually holds and pinches the wire right up here. It's, it's a strain relief so that you're not putting unnecessary tension on your, your terminals up here. Um, it looks like, which I do seem to recall, the lug is larger than the diameter in, of the inside of the strain relief. So without completely destroying the strain relief, I, I'm not going to be able to get it off. I either destroy the strain relief or I destroy the cable with the lug. So I think that kind of answers my question as to how I'm going to run my uh, conduit for my battery connections down into the wireway. I think I'm just going to use small pieces as pass-throughs in the wireway for the cables to run through. Initially, I was thinking, well, I can just do full length conduit sections and terminate up into um, these adapters up inside the adverter. And actually, if you look, let me see if I can turn a light on here. So these openings, they do have uh, these little tabs that you can pull off to make the openings larger. So I believe I could actually get these one inch conduit connections inside here if I wanted to, but I'll still have the issue with the lug and I'd be removing a strain relief for these terminals up here. So I think the strain, having the strain relief on those cables is more important than my OCD aesthetic look, at least for the time being. And again, I still don't have more lugs. So I'll just do a four inch section, maybe a little more than four inches uh, for the conduit to go inside the wireway. I might flare out the top and the bottom and use it kind of like a grommet. So it seals around, at least somewhat seals around the top and the bottom, the openings that I have to drill through. So nothing else can get down inside. Looks like my cable's actually holding it up in place for a second at least. I think the fun part's just gonna be trying to line up straight up and down where the holes would end up coming through 
Same with here. And the real fun ones are gonna be down here on the bottom with these battery connections. Because this, I don't know if you can see it. So these battery spots are sitting almost flush up against the wall. But then down here, I've got my plywood spaced away from the wall. The, the battery connections would have to come out more towards the middle of the wireway and come down the middle so they can come out. So I'm really hoping that I can get things lined up properly. For the time being, I'm not gonna mess with the PV lines. I'm more than likely gonna end up changing that at some point just because it will look cleaner, but we'll have to see. Be easier right now just to mess with the larger lines. Because even the communication cables, they're gonna go up here so I can have the PV lines just kind of running right along the back edge for right now. And actually, I've got adhesive cable management that would allow me to just stick right to the top of this wireway and bring it right across and then down to the circuit breakers. So I might just leave them as is, we'll see. Battery connections hooked back up, passing through the wireway for both inverters. And it's only 5.45 p.m. Yikes! I swear, drilling those holes through the conduit, or drilling the holes through the wireway took forever. All right, I think I need to get the, the new panel mounted over here first. I'm not even gonna worry about the AC disconnect for the input right now. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is having four outs right here, two here, and two here. If I end up getting another wireway, that'll be the easiest to work with, just pulling these out and extending the wireway this way. But because the four gauge wire just does not like to bend very easily, I think having it needing to 90 up and then 90 in to this knockout is just a lot of bending unnecessarily when I could easily just have it come out and then have 190 up for this knockout here and then this knockout here. So the rear, the rear sets of conduit here would be the, in, the power out and then the two over here would be power in. If I can get these adapters in for the input conduit as well, I, would, I won't have to drill into this wireway anymore, which would be nice. 
So I guess I will have to measure out and get these marked and then drill them out and then start breaking knockouts so that I can get power supplied. It's currently six o'clock. Remembering how far and how much slag gets thrown from the drill bit, I grabbed some of my battery boxes and just kind of covered my batteries a little bit to prevent all that metal from getting thrown uh, and sitting on top of my battery cells. And that bottom right one I ended up drilling too low. So I might have to see if I can just cap that and use just the one for the AC input. But you look down here, and all that stuff on the ground, that's all that metal shavings and slag from drilling out and then it's all inside the wireway too. Got to get that all cleaned up before I get anywhere, get any further. Well, it would have been nice if I could have gotten that fourth one in there, but I think I would do more damage than good. So we'll just use the two in the back for the output and then the one in the front for the input. Now I ended up screwing up here, so I need to get a reducer to go down to a one inch. I'll have to get that at some point this week. My battery was dying on my camera because it's they've been running all day. In fact, both cameras are near dead. Uh, so I, I saved you and me some boring footage of wiring things up, um, unwiring and rewiring over and over and over and over again. It's just very boring. So here's here's what the the box looks like right now. On the top left, that's the line going out to my other panel. The top right two breakers. The top one is going to my laundry room upstairs. The second breaker is going to... Um, I had an outlet down here, but I switched it over to MC and then just mounted it down here. It's been 12 gauge Romex sitting on the floor for the past, what, two weeks. Um, and then due to the length of the cabling that I had, I had to put the inverter feed line in the bottom right hand corner. I would have preferred to put it on the top, but oh well. I mean, it, it doesn't make any difference one way or the other as long as I label it properly. But 
let's take a look at the the wire way. Got the wires kind of cleaned up in there. I did screw the covers back on and pre-charge the capacitors and then turn everything on. I need to come up with a better way to handle that. I mean, I guess in the grand scheme of things, I shouldn't be turning this stuff off that far to where I'm having to disconnect batteries for quite some time. So at this point, the inverters themselves are on, but the breakers are turned off. It's almost nine o'clock. And I know we've got dinner going upstairs and I think I hear my son is taking a shower. So I really don't wanna go flipping the panel over at this time. Maybe once we get my son in bed and then after we eat dinner, then I'll take a look at it. So while it was a hassle, I definitely think the wire way was the right way to go. The, it's de it's gonna allow for just cleaner cabling altogether, neater bundles. I still have to run the AC in and then mount the box over there, the disconnect box for the AC in. I think that's probably gonna end up being a video in and of itself. I have to see if I have enough wire to go up over, make a turn and then go down into the other panel over there. But I know that I wanna watch the 120 loads just for maybe a day or so. And even if the load throughout the entire day is very minimal, then I know that I wanna try and move over to this box, I want to try and move over my outdoor wood boiler circuit, my furnace circuit, and I would love to be able to move over my well circuit as well. So realistically, I could probably put, I think, three of my 220 loads in this panel. I know the well would be one of them. I'm not sure about the rest. Maybe the dryer, maybe. But I'd have to I'd have to look at my energy monitoring program and just kind of determine which one I want to would want to switch over. But again, it's it's going to be a slow switch over time so that I can monitor and make sure that I have enough solar, especially now that we're getting ready to go into the winter where I'm not going to get nearly as much solar. I'll be able to monitor throughout the winter time and then decide whether or not I want to move a load over or not. All right, just had a very filling meal of uh, breakfast wraps and hash browns. Haven't had those in a while. They were very good. <clears throat> now I feel like I'm gonna move very sluggish. I think it's finally time to test this out and See how it works. Let's check our voltage over here. 240.2. I want to check here, make sure that I don't have anything coming up. Nothing. All right, because this is the line that's going to be going and feeding the other panel. And it should not have any power coming to it right now because it's running on the mains. And it's got a few hundred millivolts. So, if I flip this breaker, nothing should happen. Knock on wood. All right. Now we're sending 240 volts over to the other panel, but it's not hooked up because the generator interlock kit is still preventing the inverter from being the primary power source because the mains are turned on. I know that the lights are all gonna go out when I flip this switch. So mains off, everything starts beeping. 
interlock kit. Doesn't want to stay on. Interesting. Is it actually tripping or is the interlock kit not actually allowing it to switch over? It's something to do with this breaker. Whether it's the interlock kit not allowing the breaker to actually flip all the way or what. Oh, yep, that's what it is. You gotta push hard. If you try and push in the middle, it just springs back. But if I push the bottom, and then slide my finger up to the top and push the top, you'll hear two clicks. There, all right, come back over to this breaker. Turn it on so that my wife can have power upstairs. And that should be it. I see behind Ian, I see lights turned on. Phase two, 2%. Phase one, 5%. Well, it was a very long day. Uh, finally, I was able to get things switched over. Now it's just gonna be a lot of testing, a lot of monitoring battery was at 49% uh, before I turned everything off today. Unfortunately, it was a fairly sunny day and I was not able to capitalize on all that sun. So we'll see how things go overnight. I'm really thinking that with the minimal things that run overnight, we shouldn't be utilizing a whole lot of power. And then tomorrow, we'll see how much we recharge and if we need to switch back to the grid temporarily so that we can recharge the batteries. So far, the only thing that I have noticed after switching over is I've got some LED lights in our kitchen that's on a dimmer, and those are flickering. We don't, we don't leave the LEDs at 100% most of the time. It's, it's 60, 65% because it doesn't need to be that bright and you really notice it when you dim the lights down. And it is a an LED rated dimmer, and the LEDs are dimmable lights. So that'll take some investigation to figure out what is going on there. But other than that, uh, the occasional ramp up you hear is my wife running the microwave upstairs. So all in all, I'm pleased except for the fact that it took this long. <laughs> uh, I was really thinking that it was gonna take a whole lot less time. But a few things that I have learned that maybe they'll help somebody. Uh, first, use the wireway. It's great. It really helps keep things organized and everything. If you have to drill into the wireway, don't bother using a battery powered drill. It will overheat on you. I got two, two and a half holes, I think, and then my drill started overheating on me. So I switched over the corded drill and the corded drill just blew through every hole, no problem whatsoever. When you have to drill through the wireway, make sure you're wearing grub clothes and you've kind of got the area cleaned up because it's going to be shooting little slag pieces all over the place. When you plan on a timeline, you need to pad it significantly. <laughs> Normally when I try to plan things out, whether it's expenses or time, I try to pad with at least 10%. Um, with this, you're going to need to add more than 10%. I was thinking that this was going to take, you know, maybe four hours. And here it is, just rolling around at 10 o'clock at night. So I think eight, two, two o'clock is when we started, I think. So it's, it's gonna take time. And I skipped lunch 
Um, I didn't really do anything else. I didn't go upstairs. It was pretty much all down here. So, well, with that, I'm tired. I think we had a great night. The upcoming uh, videos still have to be kind of a system analysis. I want to do a walkthrough once I get everything done. I want to do a walkthrough of how everything's set up, what I'm using, batteries, panels, all that stuff. I still need to wire up another array or two outside. And obviously I still need to wire my AC inline from the panel on the other side of the camera. So lots still to do, lots still to come. Like I said from the very first video that I put out, uh, I'm really doing these as documentation for myself. It's hard to remember things just by looking at pictures. And walking through the videos and, and trying to talk through my process of what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, it really seems to help me so that I can go back and review later. If it helps somebody else in the process, awesome. I'm no expert at any of this stuff. I just went through and tried to learn as much as I can from a lot of the guys that know what they're talking about. And that's where I am where I am now. So thanks for watching. Y'all have a great night and we'll catch up with you later.